so y'all first thing on the list was feeding the squirrels of course we are still giving them milk but they are getting a lot bigger so they're finally starting to eat some nuts and whatever this mixture is it's got walnuts and some dried worms and just a plethora of stuff for the squirrels so they are starting to eat this and it's getting so exciting seeing them get so big so that was the first thing on my agenda this morning Jim is actually working on getting our watermelon planted, some cantaloupe, and getting some mowing done that we've been putting off. Now the ground is still pretty soft, but it's good enough to be able to mow, and we just really needed to get that done. It gets out of control so quick down here, y'all, especially with how much rain we've been getting. It's so rainy one day, and the next day it's perfect, beautiful sunshine, and then the next day it's raining, so this grass is just growing like crazy. Our garden is already flourishing and it looks fantastic compared to last year. So knock on wood that we keep on on that track. But what I'm going to do this morning is come back in here into the bathroom. We went ahead and took the toilet out of here this morning before Jim got started. He helped me with that. But I needed to put a few more tiles back behind this toilet that I couldn't get to before and finish up a few more things. So I have this stuff that I've been wanting to put down. <laughs> and it's called grout coloring. If y'all remember, whenever I did the grout in the bathroom, it was supposed to be black and it ended up being kind of gray. And this stuff is gonna be really good because I tried it out on a little section and it completely makes the grout now match the tile. I think that it looks a lot better, a lot more slick, and it just overall gives it kind of a classier look. So I need to finish doing that as well as change out this toilet. Whenever we first put this toilet in here, y'all gave me a lot of shade because it was like a square shaped toilet, which I love it, but Jim decided that he wanted to be kind of fancy and we're going to be putting in our bidet from Haro. You going to help me put the bidet in? Huh? Do you know what a bidet is? <laughs> now the bidet that we're going to be putting in does need power, but luckily we hadn't put our baseboards in silicone and finished completely. We had just put them up there, Brad nailed them a few times, so they were really easy to take out and we'll be able to run that wiring right behind this base trim. All right, y'all. Well, I've been so excited to be able to tell y'all about our new smart toilet by Haro. Picture that you just stroll into your bathroom and bam, you're greeted with a new toilet that is just as fancy as you are. <laughs> Which in our case, wouldn't take much, but you know, it's always nice to have luxury things. I especially like the foot kick and automatic sensor lid flipping. It makes even my quick bathroom experience more convenient. With temperature controls and bidet settings, this toilet knows exactly how you like it. No more shivering on cold seats. It's all about cozy vibes from here on out. And get this, you can actually control it all from your throne. Yep, it has a remote control. This remote control has so many settings and so many different temperatures that you really could spend endless hours in here just even messing with the remote. This remote control has so many settings, so many temperature settings as well, which is what I really like because not everybody likes the same heat or the same coolness. So it really is customizable to you. You can adjust the settings without even lifting a finger. Oh, and did I mention that it's all hands-free? So say goodbye to all those gross handles and get your toilet back, or should I say, your honey? <laughs> But wait, y'all, there's a lot more features on here, like the heated seat for those chilly mornings, the bidet setting for a spa-like experience, and even a pre-wash feature that is for an extra clean feeling. Plus, it's got neon lights, because why not add some flair to your bathroom? And the best part is getting the luxury without emptying your wallet. It's luxury for less. So upgrade your bathroom game with Haro Smart Toilet, and trust me, your honey will thank you. So y'all to get your hands on one of these Haro toilets, make sure to go to the link listed in the description below and use our code Cajun Country, and that's gonna give you 15% off of your order. And again, that's code Cajun Country for 15% off, and y'all head down to the link in the description. Also, I'm gonna add a pinned comment, and now that this is put in place, I'm gonna finish up working on this floor, do a little bit more details in here that I need to get done, and go check on Jim.
Well, this morning I was able to get outside, get a little weed eating done, get some mowing done. Still have a ton to do, but at least we're getting a few things marked off the old list. So this afternoon, one thing that has been on the list y'all have been hounding us about is working on our little <laughs> garden tractor. I wouldn't say hounded. Maybe like a constant, good, solid, pressurized reminder. You know what I mean? The definition of hounding? <laughs> <laughs> No, we're gonna get out here. We have the injectors to do in here. At one point I said that I was gonna do it. At one point Jim said that he was gonna do it. So we decided we're just gonna do it together. It's a perfect day to do it. It's a little windy, but it is a beautiful day outside. It's warm and it's getting drier every day. So we know we're not gonna wanna work on stuff like this when it gets dry enough for us to move that other container and get that going. Yeah, and if y'all remember, whenever we first got this tractor, I should say that Jim got this tractor. <laughs> The agreement was, was that you could fix this without having to buy any parts, correct? That was the initial thought. Are these injectors new or used is the next question. These injectors that we have that we're gonna be putting in this tractor, they are new, but I shopped around the globe until I found the best deal that I could get. So since we've had this, it is not brand. We have got it to pull start a few times, but all in all, no success. And whenever we got this thing, we knew that it was gonna have some drastic surgery that needed to be done. The motor was full of water. The valves was rusted shut. The pistons, the rings were rusted to the cylinder walls. It was in bad, bad shape. Yeah, and slowly but surely we have gotten it better and better, but just haven't gotten it running to that perfect mark where we can actually leave it running. Like I said before, whenever we took this thing apart, whenever we got it here, the pistons was actually rusted to the cylinder walls. So I had to take a hammer and a block of wood and anything else that I could find that was really handy to beat on it with and finally got these things beat out of there. Well, I was able to shop around long enough to find a rebuild kit for this, a partial rebuild kit, and it wasn't that costly. So we have new pistons, uh, a new water pump, new head gasket, those kind of things. But now also, whenever we tore into it, all of these injectors was rusted shut. The injector pump was rusted closed and it was just in a bad shape. So I was able to take the injector pump apart, get it cleaned up, get it functioning, get it operating. These injectors, they were pumping diesel, but I think the problem is, is they were pumping too much fuel. So instead of atomized spray, you was getting just a squirt of diesel. So this thing will smoke and it runs hot. Now, I don't know if that's from the thermostat sticking in the water pump housing, or if it's just from so much fuel in there, it's creating such a heat that it just can't maintain its temperature. So that's gonna have to be something else that we watch for. One of the things that was a new experience for me is I had never torn into a diesel injection pump before this one, right here. It was froze up and pitted really bad. So I was able to get it all apart, get it cleaned and get it back together but it is extremely tricky to get this thing back together and get it in sequence. As small as that is, you would not believe how many parts and pieces there are in there. Now, when I did that, I got the center injectors backwards, 180 degrees at a time, and it caused diesel fuel to pour into the block. You notice the oil is about three times as much as it's supposed to have in it. That's because it's mostly diesel. So we're gonna change one, two, three injectors, and then we're gonna be changing out the oil as well. And hopefully it'll be a simple and easy fix. Take this hose off first. You know, every time you say simple and easy fix, what happens? It's not good. It's never simple and easy never fix. Never good for the home team. <laughs> I probably really tighten these last, you know that? Why is that? <laughs> because I was actually able to loosen them. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. Oh. oh, good job. Spin it this way. Hey. Spin it. Good 
job. I do it again here. All right, we don't need this anymore, right? <laughs> Make don't you dare. <laughs> Make you nervous. <laughs> I could just see us having to spend more money that I was good to get scolded about. Well, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt to go get the toolbox where we had some extra, actual tools instead of uh, two crescent wrenches and a pair of channel locks. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that. One thing I'll say, that I don't know about you, but we might wanna leave this nice paint job. <laughs> Okay, for real, are we gonna leave it? We can't do all this work to it and leave it this awful rattle can blue. That looks like a show tractor. What you talking about? There's absolutely nothing showy about this. <laughs> I've definitely seen worse. I've had worse. You think we're gonna go blue still? Well, it's a Ford tractor. It'd almost be, you know, I don't know. You almost have to go blue with a Ford tractor. You know, the return line looks good. It's bent to high heaven, but. But that was supposed I, to look good, right? I, I there probably was... did that. So. Oh. So that's what an injector looks like. Almost like a spark plug. Right? Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, it looks like a spark plug, but it's far from it. So what happens is... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, exactly what you said, but not... <laughs> yeah, like almost exactly like that, except totally opposite. So what happens is, is the fuel comes in here and it comes down against a spring-loaded valve right here. So when the pressure builds up to exceed the pressure that the spring can hold, this opens up and the diesel atomizes and sprays as a high-pressure fog. Now this is the return right here. See where these little holes are right here? And this is anything that doesn't go out of the hole, it goes back into the fuel tank. So what I'm hoping is that these springs are weak and it's not holding the right amount of pressure, so it's letting just droplets and streams of fuel blow by this valve here without holding the proper pressure. That's what I'm hoping. It's probably a long shot, but maybe. Just as a safety precaution, Jim said that we're gonna open up one of these and make sure that it looks right. You know, that'd be real great. Get it all out here, have everything ready, and then it'd be the wrong injectors. I would never hear the end of that one, I can promise you. You never hear the injector of that one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's put them up. Do a little comparison. Oh, yeah. The throat's the same. Everything's the same. Must be the same. Same, same. But different. But different. <laughs> so just looking at the new injector compared to the old injector, you can see the old injector, the needle is pushed way, way back in there. This one is protruding from the end, just like it should. So I'm hoping this is not seating and it's just blowing fuel through there and this fixes the problem. That would be perfect. Is there any reason that you want to keep the old ones? Well, I don't think you should ever really throw parts away. Might need something off here one of these days, you know what I mean? Can't ever tell. Okay, but they're not functioning, correct? Yeah, but they have parts and pieces of them that is probably still good. You never know. You might find this exact model somewhere, and you might need a 
I don't know. Broken a return injector? nut or something off the injector. Hey, you got them in stock. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, so there's a little seal here. It's a brass washer that goes on each one of these, and that one stuck in the cylinder head. But hey, shouldn't be an issue. Shouldn't be any problem. Shouldn't? Shouldn't. Should be able to get that out. Now y'all look, I really ain't a diesel mechanic, but compared to the new ones, none of these look like they're seating. So with a little luck, and I only pay like 87 bucks for all three new ones. That is insanely cheap. So that might be a good or a bad thing. See, they're probably coming after this tractor. Yeah, they're it's such getting, a rare specimen, you know. Getting a bird's eye view. <laughs> Okay, I bet this would be a problem for you if I was not here. You know that? To get that out of there? Oh, that seal? I yeah. almost forgot about it. Yeah, can you get that out of there for me? Get my little fingers in here. Oh, look. It Just even like tight. that. <laughs> now that is a farmhand manicure right there if I ever seen one. Custom. Custom deal right there. Oh, she made it. She made it. All right. <laughs> oh, and oh. there she goes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Stand it back up. There you go. <laughs> she's, she's got such a sweet little disposition sometimes, you know it? All right, so as easy as they came out, it's as easy as they're gonna go in, huh? Yep, I did remember to put the little washer back on the end of it, so let's see if we can get it in there without it falling off. So yeah, we're still working with channel locks and two crescent wrenches. I don't know about myself sometimes. See what I mean? No, here's the thing. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like, can I challenge myself to use this? Or could I walk inside and get the proper tools and have it done quicker? It's kind of like, I just don't want to stop and take the time, you know? Like, I'm pretty sure I can pull this off without getting it. But then again, that might be why I'm in this mess to begin with. <laughs> now I went ahead and tightened these fuel lines up going to these injectors. Now, I might have made a mistake there because typically what I would do is leave these loose, pull the tractor or turn the tractor over. In this case, we're going to have to pull it because the starter's out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I you just mentioned, said that. didn't mention that one. I just said that. Did I might can fix it though. Can you? You can't ever tell. You never know. But anyway, I'm thinking that we might have enough volume here, enough momentum with the return lines. We know the return lines is open, so it might bleed off enough to start. If not, I'll crack these loose, get Liddy to pull me. When diesel starts spraying out, I'll tighten them up. That's the plan. Also, this is probably not the time to tell you this, but I painted the alligator's teeth in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this could be really, really bland or really cool. Tell me that you painted him some Bubba teeth. I should have. 
What is, what color? Don't white. tell me white. Did you, I didn't white. White? It's pearly. That's boring. Everybody no, has white teeth. In the bathroom, you have to leave them white. It's like... <laughs> you should at least painted him with some summer teeth. You know, summer there, summer not. <laughs> well, it kind of looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to pour that resin over the top of it. So I went ahead and did the paint. Because I now, before I did that, and I didn't really consult you on that, but I think you're going to like it. Uh, that makes sense. Right, right. Load head gasket. got hot the other day it must have blew the head gasket but that's where it is ah. and I take a wild one at the price of that <laughs> it ain't really the price the price is probably you know not that bad <laughs> Look at me and say that was straight face. Really, the head gasket's probably, I'd probably get a head gasket for 40 bucks. But it's just the time that's gonna go into pulling that apart. Oh well, I ain't quitting on a miss. Hey honey, I need a head gasket. Why didn't I see that? I don't know, that dipstick must not reach all the way to the bottom of the oil pan because I didn't see any milky on that dipstick when I pulled it out of there. But it surely is. So whenever we were pulling this thing, it was running, everything was going good. I noticed that it was getting hot, so we killed it. That was when the injection pump, all that stuff, all the dieseling was not dieseling like it was supposed to. It wasn't injecting, it was flooding the engine. So we said, well, we'll just stop before we do any damage. Apparently, I should have stopped like a minute and 30 seconds soon. That's the best I can come up with. Hmm, okay. Well, at least the injectors are changed, right? Hey, yeah, that's like putting, that's like putting brand new wheels and tires on a junk car that it is just not gonna work. Society teaches us that if we set goals that we don't achieve, we're a failure. If our car isn't as fancy as our neighbors, we need to improve, but there isn't just value in hitting the goal or reaching the destination. It's the life you live while working toward that goal that's the most important. Learning from your mistakes, trying something new, or maybe even listening to others tell you about their experience is a real pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I say this, challenge yourself to do something this week that's outside of your comfort zone, because that is where the true reward is. You may not achieve excellence, but it's a guarantee that your eyes will shine a little brighter and your smile will get a little wider. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we'll see you soon, Cajun family.